Okay guys, I'm going to show you our secret tactics that we've been working out for um, Il Muerlock. First one, because Rob and I are going to go fishing soon to Sweet Hope Lock, where the rule is you have to use, you can't use more than two single size four hooks on your bait. I bought some smaller bait sprats which are about four or five inches long. Use the baiting needle to thread a wire trace through the fish. And on this end, we've got one size four hook that just sits nicely if the fish takes it head first. Then for the clever bit, this is what you would call a flying single. It means that when it slides up and down the trace, there's no pressure on the fish, so it's not going to pull out the fish when you cast. All the pressure's on the main wire trace. The good thing is, you can put this in the middle of the fish, at the tail of the fish, you can put it anywhere you like. Uh, in this case, I'm going to actually put it through where the dorsal fin is, because it's quite tough just there. That's it. Pull that through. And then I've got a flying treble, a flying single hook there, which if a fish takes it, should be no problem. You should get hooked no bother with that hanging out, and the other one hanging out as well. And that's all going to be fixed to a patternoster, which just keeps the bait away from the lead. The lead's going to thread through that swivel and hang down a couple of feet, so it'll keep the whole thing out the way of the lead weight and not get tangled up. So that's the first idea for using single hooks for pike which we've never tried before. The second new idea is this. Sardines, as you'll probably know, are a very, very soft fleshed fish. I mean, this one's still a little bit frozen. Now what I've done, I've stuffed some polystyrene down its throat to give it a bit of buoyancy and I've made these nets out of garlic bags and they're very nicely fit over the top of the sardine like this because when you cast the sardine out it tends to uh, fall apart really as much as anything but putting this on, it means two things really. We'll leave the tail sticking out so there's plenty of juices coming out of it. When the pike sees this, he's not going to know that's a garlic bag. And it actually looks a little bit like fish scales on the fish. Especially when it's underwater shining and all the smells coming out of it. And this is going to be quite simply fitted onto a double Jardine snap tackle, one hook through the head and the other hook about halfway down like that. Now the good thing with this is when he casts it out the hooks are actually pulling on the net and not the fish so it's a pretty strong way of connecting the, the fish to the to the line. Uh, the other good thing is um, when a pike takes that, this nylon netting, which is quite tough, is actually going to get tangled up in its teeth. So uh, I would hope that that will help, help us to keep the fish on until it gets hooked, because sometimes you spit the bait out and it's going to have a bit of a problem with a sardine with those mesh stuck in its teeth. So that's option two on the second rod. The sprat, by the way, is going to be fished under a sliding float for instant striking with single hooks because we don't want them swallowing the little fish. The third one, and you can pick these up at, uh, at the local Wing Hong Chinese supermarket, is actually uh, Indian mackerel. They've got really tough skin that stay on the hook for ages. And this is going to be as simple as put them on a Jardine snap tackle one through the top of the skull because it's nice and hard and the other one down by the dorsal fin because it's tough there as well 
and that actually makes a lovely bait and it lasts for hours and hours you just keep up need to dip it on a bit of smelt oil or something like that or mackerel oil and that's it so that's three rigs all set up ready to rock and roll and we shall see which one works the best we've got three sizes of fish there as well we've also got some mackerel fillets proper mackerel fillets so we might try them and all but uh, I think that should be hunky dory and I'm looking forward to trying them Well, we're fishing. Three rods set up. Blue bite indicator, red bite indicator, yellow bite indicator. All we need now is uh, one of them to whack up and we'll see if we can catch a fish. It's a canny day, but it's raining a lot, but there's no wind, quite pleasant. No sign of fish yet, but it takes a while to get them to uh, to come on the feed with all the oil in the water off the fish. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully one of these indicators will whack up and we'll be into a fish fire. Well, we've got nothing at that last spot, so we've moved around about another quarter of a mile around the lock. There's Rob setting up there, carrying all the gear as an absolute killer. It's nice and calm around here. It's a bit weedy, we think it might be a bit deeper, so once again, three rods out here, three rods out along there, float on one, ledge on two, and we'll just have to try and see what comes along. See you soon with the fish, hopefully, got to catch something today. So annoyed those guys are in our spot over there after we we searched the whole area and now we can kind of get in. Bloody annoying it is. Shouldn't be allowed. Bite on the float. And I'm hoping to see it slide away. There it goes. Strike. Well guys, the people that were in the caravan up there have moved. So we've walked back, nearly had a heart attack getting back to the dam end where the car is here. And uh, we're going to head up to where we'd researched and all the research because we know there's fish up there. So we're confident now. You can see how much rain must have fallen here for the amount of water coming over the weir at the bottom of the lock. It's unbelievable. Normally this is dry, but uh, certainly not dry today, that's for sure. Plenty of scotch mist about. Rob's had to go back for his rod. Two trips to put a mile walk, it's a killer. Now I just had a bite on the rod with the red indicator. Something picked the bait up. I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> the rod with the red indicator just shot up. Very quick bite and then stopped. So, yeah, but why did it drop it so quick? <clears throat> yeah. Just move the bait, see if it comes back. That was a positive bite like, uh -huh. really positive. It whacked the indicator up against the rod from there, so I know it was a bite. Well chaps, we've blanked, pissing down with rain, we're soaking wet, it's freezing cold, 
We've had one bite. You've had a bite? I've had a bite. No, it wasn't imagination, it was a bite. Well, your fingers are freezing off, so I'm turning the camera off. Goodbye.